Tokyo. The city of Tokyo is so beautiful. It's one of the most de desired destinations in the world now to visit Japan. And look at these beautiful trees. Even in the city, you can find these wonderful deciduous trees. This one has some history behind it in Hibiya Park. But I'm wearing this mask and there's a reason behind it. It's all based in history and today we're going to be going over why Tokyo might not be the best destination to visit right now. So this is what people do. They bring their masks down like this. You'll see it on the on the subways um, when they want to talk, but I'm not actually sick. Um, more and more people are wearing the masks in Tokyo and, and you can see this when you walk around the city. The reason why is, is not because people are sick. It's actually because of the pollen. It's getting really bad and this hay fever season has already started this year and in fact here, hey how you doing everybody? In fact even in the water you can see some of the pollen that's gone uh, from the trees in the city. It's, it's getting into the lake. It's gonna get worse and worse. I've already started to feel it. And this is all based in history. This is what makes this so exciting. So that behind me is a deciduous tree that was uh, 300 years old. But in 1964, Showa 43, I believe that's right, it started to rapidly decline and then the tree was lost. You can see. There's, there's a couple of other uh, trees that were planted in its place, but it's, it's sad to see this tree go. But I'm not sad to see the other trees to go. All right, we gotta have this talk. So, after World War II, a lot of Japan, a lot of Tokyo was just completely devastated and there weren't a lot of trees. So they just had this massive effort to replant all of the trees to reforest Tokyo. The problem was that they used uh, sugi and uh, hinoki and these are, uh, sugi is um, cedar trees and hinoki is cypress trees, mostly sugi. Sugi is awful for pollen. It's just awful. Sugi kofun. Um, kafun, sorry. Kafun is the word for pollen in Japanese. And in 1945, they planted these, these trees. And uh, I, I believe the idea was also to re reinvigorate the the um, wood industry, the timber industry for houses because you needed wood to build houses and, and no trees meant no reconstruction. So they, they completely reforested it. However, in the 1960s and the 1970s, uh, the trees, uh, the, the, for, the timber industry in Japan just sort of started going down. There weren't so many houses being built um, in the 1980s and the 1990s forest industry started to keep going down and down and down and there's nobody to really even work the industry now even if they want to get it going to cut down these cedar trees because Japan has a national disease. That disease is hay fever. <laughs> it really is hay fever. So today I'm walking through Hibiya Park to go over Japan's national disease and talk to you about why this is such a problem and why you may not want to visit Tokyo today and you might want to wait wait until like summer just I guess it just depends on how bad your hay fever is mine is pretty bad in uh, February and I it never really was like this but I, I realized that it was the sugi pollen from the trees not too far away from the reforested Tokyo Tokyo is a green city just maybe not in the best way there's things that you could do to fight it, but this hay fever is also the reason why influenza is always so bad in Tokyo. You get on the subway, everyone is sneezing, and there's a percentage of those people who have influenza, which means that Tokyo at this time of year would be the perfect place for the zombie apocalypse to take place, just because everyone is sneezing from the kafun, and the kafun, the pollen, creates um, anyone with influenza just spreading it to everybody onto the train. So that's why people would be wearing um, these masks. I put it into my pocket. So people are wearing masks not just because they're sick, not because they're trying to prevent from getting sick, but they're also doing it to cut down on the pollen and the hay fever, um, which is always going to be a problem in the city of Tokyo. Believe it or not, the city of Tokyo is trying to fix this. In fact, Mayor Koike, who is the mayor of Tokyo right now and will be when the Tokyo Olympics uh, come in 2020, has made it one of her campaign promises, I believe in 2017, that she said that she was going to help fix the national disease, which is 
hay fever by cutting down some of the trees. And it's okay to cut them down and replant them with something else. Don't plant them with uh, sugi and, and hinoki trees. So they're starting to do that, I guess. There's 60, um, hectare, 60 hectare acres. I, can't, I, I forget the unit of measurement. Large areas are being cut down annually. But, and it cost them $8 million to do it. But the problem is that it, in order to reforest it, it's going to take them 500 years because it's just a lot of trees in the city of Tokyo. So she's doing what she can, and I, I really respect that. She's not the first politician to promise to fix hay fever. This was a big part of the campaign of um, Ishihara, who was the mayor of Tokyo before Koike, and actually maybe two mayors before. And he also made this big promise. I guess it was uh, um, after another really bad bout of hay fever in 2004. It was awful, I remember that year. And he had said uh, he's going to cut down the trees and everyone thought he was crazy, but they don't when they're suffering from hay fever. Here's the thing. Most people are pretty rational and they know you cannot fix this problem. It's not, an, it's not an easy one to fix, but when they're suffering between now, and this is the earliest that I've ever started to, to feel the pollen, the hay fever, when they started to suffer, when the people start to suffer from hay fever, and Japanese suffer bad, a lot of them, they start to say, yeah, you know, that's a good idea. So between the end of January to like April, everyone's on board with this cut down trees and plant it with something else. The problem is that they can't because there's not enough workers in the forestry industry to cut down the trees. There's not enough population, there's not enough workers to take the timber down and it's way too expensive in Japan to do that. This isn't, you know, um, this is a pretty expensive country for construction. So we have this uh, dilemma and it is a big one. What to do? Influenza is always gonna be bad in the city when you cram people into the Yamanote line and you're like this and the guy next to you is sneezing from hay fever but also is somebody who just got hay, um, influenza. This is going to be a big problem. Uh-oh. He's really not happy. So anything can happen on a live stream. That guy was not happy. He called his son Baka. All right, getting back to the story. Oh my gosh. I, I don't know if you can hear, he's really angry. That does not happen a lot in Japan. Anyways, um, back to the hay fever. There's, there's lots of things that you can do, but when you're on a crowded train, there's not much that you can do in that situation to avoid getting influenza. You can wear a mask. You can, uh, what I do is if someone looks sick, I start to go like this and start backing away from them. I back away. This is what you would do if there was a zombie apocalypse. You don't hang around the zombies. You gotta, you gotta get away. And taking precautions might seem like the uh, um, crazy thing to do, you know, to walk away from sick people. But I, I have no, I have very little pride. Staying healthy is my, staying surviving is my biggest <laughs> goal in life. But. There's stuff that you can do. One of them is to wear masks. And there's all sorts of masks. Do they keep you, and they look like this, they're surgical masks. Do they keep you from getting sick? They, they might cut down on it. No, there's no 100% mask. They even say 99.99% influenza virus cut on the mask bottle, on the mask uh, packaging, but there's no like 100 effective way. But here's the thing. If the sick person wears the mask and the non-sick person is wearing a mask, then there's two walls of protection. So I figure, you know, it maybe does cut down and that's a good thing. However, when you couple in hay fever and sneezing, yeah, that chance of getting influenza has just turned into, you know, sticky particles that stick. <laughs> so I try to stay away. This could be Resident Evil type of stuff. I'm telling you. So, there's where we are with that. There is... And I'm in Hibia Park right now, and there are some, there are some cypress, and there there are some cedar trees here. <laughs> I apologize to the trees. Do not open up your arms and eat me like um, the Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe, and some of the other fantasy movies. Can't remember if that happened in this one. This, oh look, I I'm totally I'm in with this guy. Cut it down, cut it down. I think he's just he's not doing it for hay fever though more of a there's this 
I, I don't want to buy it. You say don't waste food. I say don't waste chemicals. <laughs> I don't need it. This is, th th this kanji here says kafun. It says ion de broker. I don't know what ion de broca means, but apparently there's, the, let me just turn it around. This is, I, I was laughing when I saw this, like things that you can do. I, I just printed it out. It's just a printout, but this is what it is. You can buy this in, in uh, Matsumoto Kyoshi or any of the um, pharmacies here. And what it does is you spray it on your face. This is, you spray it on your face and the chemicals create this um, amazing force field, which blocks, as you can see in the illustration, it blocks the pollen from getting into your face. So if you spray this uh, on, your, on your face, nothing can penetrate it. Look at this. And it makes some sort of 3D mask, apparently. Look at that. And these bad, evil, sun-looking plus pollens and other pollens, the minus one is the second type of pollen, will hit your face and then the, the force field will kick in. And it says, Ion de Broca. So, you know, maybe this works. Pollen is small. This costs about $10. I'm not gonna buy it because I don't, I'm not a believer, you know, in, in, the, in buying the force. I believe that the force is something you have to practice and work to get just from a lot of Jedi movies. You can't buy the force, okay? If anything, you could buy a tractor beam which will attract them, but nothing to repel them. I don't know. It's the big believer in, uh, you know, you can't pay for stuff like this. But I think this is something that you can try. And if you're suffering, this, this is, if you're suffering, this is what, you, you don't mind paying $10 if you're suffering. And I think that that's why they make stuff like that. Does it work? I, I don't know. I don't know. Some people told me that it works. Some people said that it doesn't. I guess it's just mental. Maybe, maybe it repels some of the, some of it. I don't know where the power comes from. Fumes, maybe. But um, it's, you can wear a mask. You can, you can spray your face with Eon. And uh, you can just avoid people. And lock yourself in, in an airtight container. And then you won't get hay fever. Um, the hay fever has bad years and good years. And there's no good years with hay fever, but I've had um, very, very bad, ba I don't even, in the US, I don't have any hay fever. I never had it until I came to Tokyo. And the worst hay fever year was 2004, where I, my eyes hurt, my eyes were itchy, my, my body didn't, I, I couldn't sleep. In, in fact, even on the floor, if, if I wet my finger and went like this, you could see the yellow pollen. Um, on your hands and it was just it was just a lot on that in that year um, this year it started earlier than normal because we've had a lot of sunshine you can see beautiful blue skies and yeah it started to hit me la two nights ago and last night was really bad my heart was pounding like this I, I have like an allergic reaction to the cedar pollen maybe and my heart beats and I can't sleep for like two weeks it had I had trouble sleeping my eyes are already starting to scratch. This might be, and I hate to say this, I hate to say this, this might be a reason not to come to Tokyo in, in February and March. Pollen. It just depends how bad you suffer from, pollen, from hay fever. You will not be happy. There's no way to uh, escape it. It's everywhere. It's even in the air. I, I, can, I think I can see clearly I believe I can see clearly, but between me and that metro sign across the street are millions of pollen. Just all over the place, flying. So I, I, I just want to say that uh, if there was a reason not to visit Tokyo, it might be now because of the pollen and the, and the uh, allergies you have. Do you have any questions after this speech? <laughs> I'm in Hibia Park right now. Uh, Juan writes in boring. Juan, you don't have to watch, my friend. You can just leave. <laughs> it's true. If you're not, if you're bored, you can go. I'm not keeping you here. This is an important public service announcement to the people of the internet. It is a very nice day. Um, we've had unusually warm days, but apparently the weather says on the 24th it's going to get cold with a cold front coming down from Hokkaido. So. Uh, that's what's gonna happen. Does Chinese dust make things even worse? Chris, yes it does. That usually comes around, I guess it was around March or April. It used to be worse 
about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was really bad. You just, it would, the whole city was covered in it. And I guess over the, I haven't really seen it too bad, but there are days where the, the air will have it and you can see it. Um, and then there's days where it's not, it's not as bad as it was 15 years ago. Um, the pollution from China sometimes makes its way to Tokyo. It hasn't, that hasn't been as bad as in the past either. I think China um, has cleaned up a little bit where it's not as bad. Fukuoka down in the south has pollution a little bit worse. Um, people do, um, Randall writes in, is that why people wear masks on the subway? That is one of the reasons. There's lots of reasons why. Uh, in Tokyo, the, the masks are a way to cut down on hay fever. People are suffering really bad they'll do anything just to cut that suffering by like 10% or 15%. Without the masks, it's unbearable to so many people. Um, the other reason is also there is influenza going around the city of Tokyo and a lot of the people that I know have it or know somebody who has it. And you know, this is now the time where I ride my bicycle if I get around the city or I walk more just because I know that the subway is just gonna, you know, it's a risk. It's, it's a big risk. <laughs> so you stay away. Matsumi writes in, haven't, haven't bought you a drink in a while. Thank you, Matsumi. I think that should go towards my am amiza Amazake fund to go get some uh, delicious Amazake with Kanai because that's uh, um, one of my favorite winter drinks. Keep me warm. Uh, Randall, you're very welcome. Uh, let's see here. Any other? Daniel writes in, we bought masks from Tokyo and we hardly use them. Yeah, I don't... We Tokyo from home. Uh, I think you could buy all the masks here. I take child size masks because I have a smaller head than normal Japanese. I, I, I'm, afraid to, I'm afraid to admit it, but my head is so small that I use child size masks, which is good because then you get sometimes animation characters on them, which, um, you know, kind of makes you look cooler on the subway if you were 12. Uh, there's other reasons to wear the mask. Um, if you want to hide your identity, I have friends who are well-known people here and they wear masks just to hide from people. <laughs> That's, so they wear a hat, a hoodie, and a mask and you're pretty much a robber. You pretty much could be, um, you know, a thug. No one would ever know your identity, just your eyes. And if you wear sunglasses, you're just a human, you're totally covered. It's like a, a balaclava, a word that I just learned recently. Um, let's see here, what else we got here? Um, plants in your house, writes in Chris. I'm not sure. Let's see here. Peter, um, I don't want to talk for Peter, but we've, we've talked about this a while. Peter definitely needs to wear a mask at this time because he cannot catch a cold. His livelihood depends on his voice work. And if you're a voice artist, and even me, I, I don't want to get sick because I do narration for the Only in Japan videos. There's a new one, by the way, coming uh, tomorrow. I, I'm getting all the facts confirmed right now, but it's already done. Um, Patreon supporters are getting an advanced preview of this to, uh, maybe tonight. I think maybe tonight. But uh, um, yeah, you don't want to get sick. So Peter wears the mask because it, it keeps his voice moist. Because I know the dry, the air is quite dry in the winter in Tokyo. My skin is, is gets cracked in the winter because it's dry here. And uh, wearing the mask keeps keeps his voice moist, his vocal cords moist, and keeps him from getting sick. It's like win-win to wear a mask. Wearing a mask, and I know it's not it's not a cool thing to do in the United States to wear a mask because it's a sign of like infection, a surgical mask. And I I, I wouldn't wear a mask in the U.S. either. I would just take the sickness because the backlash, cultural backlash, is bad. But in Japan. There is no cultural backlash. In fact, you are polite to think about other people by wearing the mask, sick or not, to prevent them from getting sick means that you're giving respect to your community. And if you are sick, and I'm gonna tell this to everybody, this is the right thing to do. If you do get sick in Japan, wear a mask because you're showing the other people around you that you don't want them to get sick. That's a reason for you to wear the mask. Um, is it bad for you to wear the mask or make you sick more? I don't think so. It might even help because it keeps keeps the moisture in and that's good for the body. Keeps you hydrated. M-O-I-S-T. Correct. That's how you spell it. <laughs> yeah, 
Yippee writes in, is it true some allergy medications are illegal in Japan? That's a really good question. Um, I know that there are some medications that are banned in Japan, and I've heard of people that at customs were caught to have this medication and got in trouble. So uh, I remember um, I, I have family members that have uh, that need special medications, and when they came to visit, I asked them to check with their doctor if if it was a um, chemical that was banned in Japan. I know that there's like two or three that are common in the United States that are banned here. I don't know. I don't, I don't travel with medication. When I need it, I buy it here. Uh, if you do get sick, wear a mask and you can visit the, you can visit the um, clinic or the doctor's office. It's, very, it's usually reasonably priced. If you have your insurance card, I think it'll cost you about 1,080 yen or like $9, nine, nine or $10 to visit the doctors here. And then you have to buy the, um, um, Tommy flu or whatever medication they give you and that's usually reasonably priced here the good thing about Japan is that medicines and s medical services compared to the United States like night and day night and day Korea is worse not having been in Korea during a fever season I cannot I cannot confirm nor deny it but I can see how Seoul which is just as crowded as Tokyo in many respects could be just as bad with with uh, influenza and hay fever but my point is that it is an awful mix right now in Tokyo it's a mess of people sneezing coughing and spreading their influenza all over the subways might not want it Gretchen wears a mask Gretchen, is that by choice? <laughs> is that by choice, though? I know you're wearing a mask. Um, you can get va you can get vaccinated, but I believe the vaccination period was ideally um, in December, and then it takes a while for the vaccine to start to work. Right now is the peak, and I think by the time the vaccine starts to work, probably the peak will have have been over. Um, we're right now very close to the peak of influenza in, in Tokyo and that, I, I don't know if that's a reason for you not to come I think if you if you're a tourist and you, you want to come to Japan at this time There's lots of benefits like the prices for hotels might be cheaper. There's more availability The city is not as crowded another reason why I like to come to Hibiya Park is there's There's usually nobody here. There's no event here today. Anyways, I love coming here and eating lunch yeah. Any meetups in April? I don't know. People are trying to schedule stuff for three months in advance. Right now I have um, f four projects from prefectures to go and film their area. And uh, I, I really am I'm waiting on dates and my priority is always going to be making the show. So don't ask me <laughs> what, to, if, what my schedule's like in April because it changes every single day. Like literally I'll get a phone call uh, for permission to film someplace and I have to pick up my gear and go. Uh, my mask was influenced by ninja rats. Mr. Das, the, that is a big story too. The rats of Tokyo. The ninja rats now have infested Ginza because when Skiji Market closed last fall, those ninja rats now, because it's becoming a construction site, have nowhere to go, so they've infested the most luxurious neighborhood in Tokyo, Ginza. <laughs> I've seen, I saw four or five rats there just last week when I was walking around Ginza. Crazy. Um, they just came out. One of them was behind the Uniqlo off of Chuodori, the main street. And when I was walking past the Uniqlo, it, it came out of one of the grates, this big rat. It stomped on some food and then went back in where it was like it like it didn't even exist. That was fast. Um, but they're there. There's also the story in the news with uh, what's his name? Banksy's drawing in Minato Ward. They found a rat with an umbrella. You can search that Banksy Tokyo. He he apparently drew an, an art on a on a. Um, panel of a warehouse outside of a warehouse and the where the city took the panel because it might be valuable and, and they cannot confirm that it was Banksy but the city went to so much trouble to put the panel into the warehouse inside so that nobody could deface this maybe multi-million dollar artwork of urban art by Banksy who is a, a British uh, urban 
artist or graffiti artist who's really good at promotions and media. But it is a, it's a really beautiful day. I, I really don't have too much more to talk about. <laughs> if you guys have questions, I'm, I'll, how much have I missed? Well, all right, all right. Just so, just so you guys know, one of the reasons, one of the reasons why I maybe make these live streams a little bit longer is because I am very well aware that the notifications don't go out until like now, and I'm very aware that people are are coming in to watch this live stream now. So that's why I might keep this longer. Uh, my mask is because of my kidney disease. Well, way to really kill the spirit, <laughs> this Gretchen. I know she's 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 smiling from that, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I wear the mask for different reasons than you. But we should get you some of these stylish masks, Gretchen. We have uh, skin-colored masks. We have masks with anime characters. We have masks with, with smiles on them, so it looks like you're smiling. So the um, mask does not have to be a born part of your, your wardrobe. It can be a fashion statement, which is another live stream that I think we'll be doing here. Uh, some of the things that we have coming up on Only in Japan Go... Um, Jennifer and I are going to be doing a live stream. We haven't done that. I want a joke mask. <laughs> yeah, you have a. I. You know what? I'll, maybe I'll send some masks to um, to Tasty Chronicles uh, for you guys to review next time. I'll put 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 some um, some fun masks in there for you guys. <laughs> the uh, only in Japan go. We're, I talk with Jennifer, and we might be doing a live stream maybe next week. Um, I've been really busy finishing up um, the hitchhiking DVD uh, project. And uh, yeah, I've been editing a video from Oita Prefecture when I worked. Uh, Mr. Das misses uh, Jennifer. Yeah, we all miss Jennifer. It's, it's gonna be good. I've seen her a couple of times we did in live stream, so it'll be good to see her again. The last live stream we did with Jennifer was at the Hello Kitty Park, uh, like in the fall last year. Um, and we have that and maybe Peter, I might meet up with Peter this weekend uh, to do a live stream. Um, I want to kind of, I, I haven't done a lot of live streams because this year I'm trying to find live streams that have topics that are not like our friend who was probably banned <laughs> by our moderators, boring. And it, it, live streams should not be boring. It should not be, it, it, live streams should not be question and answer. Live streams should cover a topic that are very, very interesting to you and not just to me. So I, I think I'm trying to do that more and more to get exclusive access to places behind the scene. Like in Miyazaki, we could go into restaurants. If you haven't seen those streams, they're pretty good. To go to a daikon farm and see where they pickle the daikon. To go to a Wagyu restaurant and to show you how to grill it. Because I learned a lot from that. I didn't know the way that he grills the yakiniku for the long strips of Wagyu beef. That was pretty cool. Um, as well as uh, live streaming of the Naked Man Festival where you get to see my bum again. <sighs> a lot of people were bummed out about that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's that. I think that live feeling, um, there's an energy to live streams that you don't have in edited videos. And I think if you're watching this, uh, for if you watch the live streams, you can see that because I have an audience of 400 people there's 400 people walking in Hibia Park with me, and that's really cool. This is weird. Like, I'm always noticing stuff here. Whenever you see English in a park in Tokyo, you stop. The Liberty Bell is behind me, for those of you from Philadelphia. See here, the Scandinavians explored an air route from Europe to Japan via the North Pole on February 24th, 1957. This monument was given in co commemoration of the 10th anniversary of the Arctic Air Route. Like, I don't know this stuff. This is great. It uses the ancient Nordic ep epitaph of the Scandinavian Vikings as a motif. Like, I didn't, I didn't know this. So this monument is because of an air route from Scandinavia to Japan via the North Pole in 1957. Some weird monuments in this park. It's interesting. interesting. Very interesting that so this is inspired by the Vikings just walk around the park you discover stuff like this very cool ah Ian I love the videos my family and I are very grateful to you for all the hard work you do by making these we're going we're going visit sometime in the next decade okay my daughter can't wait to see she's loves all the cute mascots yes and uh, 
I, I think the, the uh, Mascot Grand Prix is, is coming up in, uh, oh wait, I think it, it finished up last fall. I, I'm not sure, but I'm always interested in the, in the new Japanese mascots that are coming. Definitely you should go to that Grand Prix if you're into the Japanese mascots because they all go to it. It's like craziness. There's hundreds of mascots around and they all, in fact, that could be someone's nightmare. <laughs> There's a lot of freaky ones out there. Watch the video, the, the uh, mascot video. But thank you, Ian, so much for that. Um, it'd be great to see uh, you and your family and your daughter coming to visit uh, Tokyo. The Olympics are coming next year. The wo Rugby World Cup this year. It's never been more exciting to be in the city than right now, except for right this very second, which is what this video is all about. I'm telling people to come to Tokyo and then I'm telling them not to <laughs> in the video. That's, that's cool. And I like the way that they put... Um, the lines around it, I, I think it's to keep the birds out of it. It keeps the birds from making nests into the tree. But it also makes it look like a teepee. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. The Grand Sumo Tournament is taking place. There's a lot of stuff going on in the city. The uh, emperor made an attendance at the um, sumo tournament a few days ago and he made a big, made a lot of news and I had some, my friends, I had a lot of my friends come and uh, a lot of my friends that att attended that one post videos on uh, Facebook and I was watching like, wow, that I, nobody knew that the emperor was going apparently so it was a surprise to everybody and the entire audience at the sumo match where the emperor was attending, stood up and just applauded um, when he came into the building. And this is the last year uh, for the current emperor who lives just a hundred meters that way. Like I'm right across the street from the emperor's house. You can see that wall right there is the moat for the imperial palace. Yeah. Um, what's my opinion on the Dragon Ball movie? I don't know, I didn't see it. <laughs> can I? I, I like Dragon Ball, but I'm not a, I'm, I don't know too much about it. I usually get my information from uh, my friend Patrick uh, W. Galbraith, author of the Otaku Encyclopedia, and uh, my friends at Shueisha. So I don't know. I don't know. But now that you brought it up, Mr. Das, I think I will check it out. I will check it out. I like this live sumo match. You know who does a great job covering it? NHK World. If you go to the NHK World app, you can see all the highlights from the sumo tournaments it's pretty cool um, in fact NHK world's top videos on the internet are of the sumo tournament so you might want to check that out I think that that is I think I could YouTube I could actually live stream it maybe the place of death of Date Masamune the founder of the Sendai clan like all this stuff you know you don't really know this history is just all in this park here this is where the Sendai clan's main Edo Tokyo residence Soto Sakura, Sakurada uh, Kamiyashiki was located from the period of the founder Date Masamune, the third lord. Okay, this is a lot of information. It's, it's pretty cool though. I guess they've, they've removed the statue. Like they removed the Bruce Lee statue in Hong Kong. I was very upset about that. Oh, there is a big, big story that I want to cover that's here. I, but I have to do it at sunset and I'm gonna see if I can get somebody to come with me because it's kind of kind of creepy All right, there's a there there's I'm so excited. Um, I know a lot of youtubers are suffering from um, First world problems like lack of creativity or feeling overwhelmed. I'm not I'm, I got so many ideas when this year started I was like like you know like when when the cartoon characters are running and they're not going anywhere But they're running I felt like that like I'm going really really fast. I got so many things that I want to do and now I'm, I'm just, now I'm taking off and getting, getting all this stuff done. It's going to be so exciting. Um, I got a bazillion ideas. Um, you know, Greg from Life From From, we've been talking about doing a collaboration as well. So that might take place in February. There's so many things going on. This is a map of Hibia Park. We basically walked around the fountain and now we're at the edge of the city, edge of the park where we can look towards the Imperial Palace. It's one of my favorite areas. For those of you with large budgets, you can enjoy the Peninsula Hotel. 
one room there will cost you about 500 to 700 dollars i believe and there's ginza that direction so it's pretty nice to have a park like this you can see right behind me with big trees that's the 300 year old tree that was uh cut down that's the place where we started this live stream right there um to end this live stream i don't know if there was a reason not to come to tokyo at this time it could be hay fever and influenza and if your family does not want to catch it you might want to take taxis everywhere <laughs> just avoid the subways and the trains at peak hours especially between the times of uh um, 7 and 9 30 a.m are awful you want to wear a mask to, to protect yourself and then you want to uh, probably avoid the trains in the evening when everyone's drunk and sneezing um, between 6 30 p.m and, and 10 p.m and even late night the trains are quite crowded especially going the other direction towards Kanagawa towards Chiba there comes the Narita Express that's always kind of neat to see the Narita Express chugging through uh, chugging through the city so that's all I have just in January and February and March take care everybody and I'll see you in another live stream from Tokyo in the last 20 seconds looking at traffic because Sounds bad at, at 2, 3 8 p.m. Have a good day, everybody. Judy, I'll give her your message.